All right, everybody, good morning. Thanks for joining me here in the morning. And uh, hopefully this will be very helpful for you just in terms of figuring out what to do this summer and what your options are gonna be as far as uh, long course versus summer league and all that kind of stuff. Because we all have these decisions to make, coaches, swimmers, parents alike, plus there's vacations and all those other things. So um, we're just gonna jump right in and talk about it. I. I've done some articles in the past, like if you've been on the team previously, I, I wrote an article about this sort of topic and uh, figured this would probably be a good one just to talk through, especially if anybody has any questions. So be thinking of questions as we go. We'll definitely make time for you at the end to ask questions. I'm going to go through this one a little faster than I have some of the others just to, to make sure people can ask questions because it'll be a little more interactive. So <clears throat> let's go ahead and dive in. Oh, okay, there we go. So quick overview, we are going to talk through the phases of the swim calendar. We'll define long course and summer league. Next, we will talk about whether or not ABSC offers summer league and, and how we do, I guess, would probably be a better way to say that. We'll talk about choosing whether or not you should do summer league or long course or both, and then kind of break it down by age group. What do, what do I think is best for 10 and unders? What do I think is best for 11 to 14 year olds? What do I think is best for 15 and overs? And um, then we'll go over some upcoming dates for ABSC that will help you plan accordingly. If you're thinking about maybe my swimmer needs to take a break before long course or something like that. If you see these dates, it might be helpful to figure out what that sort of thing will look like. And then we will talk through the summer of 2023 long course uh, because we are going to have a very weird summer where we are out of Ramsey for a good portion of the summer. So if you were with us, uh, you know, a few years ago when COVID happened, <laughs> flashback to uh, to not swimming in Ramsey in the summertime. It'll be it'll be interesting. So, without further ado, let's go for it. So, starting with the phases of the swim calendar, it is a year-round swim team, is what people call it. I don't like to call ABSC year-round because you don't have to engage with it in a year-round manner, right? You can come and go in different times of the season. But point being, we offer it year-round. But within those year round calendars, there are different seasons. So during the school year, we have short course season, which is what we are in currently. That's the 25 yard format that I'll get into in a minute. And in the summer, we switch to long course season. And that's not just an ABSC thing. That is a, a USA swimming thing across the board. All meets for USA swimming turn into long course meets, or I guess the vast majority of them starting around April. And so to break it down a little bit further, Fall is sort of when we get back into the season, we kind of, it's like fall is like the hard reset every year. Maybe new swimmers join the team, kids move up groups. And so coaches just take time and work on technique and building up endurance. Then winter and early spring is what we are in currently and that's championship season. So this upcoming weekend is the 14 and under state meet. Coming up in about a month is divisionals. And so that's kind of like our big grand hurrah. That's when we want our performance to peak. And um, so then after that, we'll take a little break for a spring break, a week off. And then when we jump back in, it'll be time for long course season. And uh, so we'll start back with the, with the teaching drills and the technique and the slower, easier workouts and build back up again after that. And then for, for long course season, championship season happens in July. And to an extent, summer league as well. Like, because if you do summer league, a lot of your swimmers, especially if they swim on ABSC, will have a great chance to make the, the district and the state side of it, which I'll get into in a little bit as well. And that goes into July typically. So what is long course? As one of my super pups said last year, long course is when we take a challenging sport and make it even harder, <laughs> even more challenging than it already is. Um, this pool over here on the right looks like a place that I would love to swim right there on the beach, but it's also an example of the longest pool in the world. And uh, I think that's what a lot of kids think of when they think of long course. They just think, oh man, I'm just gonna push off the wall and swim for a million years and then eventually get over to the other side of the pool. And uh, it's not quite that bad, but what it is is it's the 50 meter format. So one length of the pool is 50 meters, right? So in our short course season, if you're swimming a 50 free right now, you're going down and back with a flip turn. Long course season, you just go across the pool one time. There's no turn involved, just a start, a sprint, a finish. 100 is two laps, a 200 is four laps, that sort of thing. Laps being length of the pool, I should say. Um, should also notice meters rather than yards. 
So there's your metric system kicking in right there. Um, so short course season is yards format and meters are technically a little bit longer than yards. So not only is it 50 meters instead of 25 meters, but it's meters instead of yards. So it's even a little bit longer, which is why the times don't actually like directly convert. You have to kind of do some conversion math in there to make it work a little bit and figure out what, what an equivalent time is. So if your swimmer goes 32 in the 50 free short course, they're not gonna go 32 in the 50 free long course. They're gonna be 35 or 36 because it's double the length, but it's also just longer in general. Um, this is the Olympic format. So that's why, you know, when you're watching the Olympics and they swim 100 fly, they just go down and back. It's because they're swimming long course, not short course. College swimming, high school swimming, those are all short course. Olympic swimming um, and in, most international swimming is long course. And uh, short course meters is also a thing that exists in other parts of the world. So there are 25 meter pools. We don't have a ton of that here in the States. There are some pools that are 25 meters, but even those pools don't typically do, you know, um, anyway, we don't, we don't usually do meets in that format is what I'm trying to say. So this is an actual representation of a long course pool. This is from um, uh, the world championships. And so you would see right here in Budapest. So you would see right here, if you're swimming a 50 free, just dive in from one side, swim down, touch the other side, you're done. And that's like your long course 50 meter pool right there. And we are blessed at UGA. I probably should just put a picture of UGA because we're blessed at Georgia to have a long course facility. It can be set up short course and all you got to do to make it long course is just move the bulkhead down. And that's why we have something, we have a, a moat, if you will, that a lot of other swim clubs don't have and that we have access to a long course pool, except for this summer, which I'll get into in just a couple minutes. So let's dive in next. What is summer league? <clears throat> and I like to break it down in terms of because a lot of swim parents weren't swimmers themselves. So I like to break it down in terms of other sports. Think about soccer, how you can play on a club soccer team or you can play on a rec team, right? Like a lot of soccer players when they're first getting started, maybe you live in Oconee County, for example, you'll go to um, park out there, Veterans Park and join for the rec league and you'll just get put on a team and play rec league soccer. But there's also soccer clubs. There's one in Athens. I think it's Athens United and there's OFC, Oconee Football Club and a few other local club teams. So ABSC would be your club team equivalent. Summer League is your rec league equivalent. Season is typically going to be six to eight weeks long. We start, at least in Oconee, we start kind of mid to late May and go until the end of June. The Athens teams and some of the other surrounding ones go more in more June and July, like Commerce Jefferson, it's more June and July. Um, nationwide, you have summer league. It's not just something that we do here. It's they've got it basically anywhere that you can swim, even upstate New York, where it might be kind of cold at the beginning of the season. They've still got summer league. So it's, it's all over the country. It's absolutely massive in the places <clears throat> that you might expect in the warmer climates like California, Florida, Texas. There are just hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of summer league teams just everywhere you go. And it's huge in Atlanta. Um, in downtown Atlanta, in the Gwinnett League, they they actually do their league championship meet at Georgia Tech. They call it the Super Bowl of swimming, and they do their league championship at Georgia Tech. So it's a uh, – and all the club kids do it. So it's it's very – there's, like, really fast times and really fast records at the, at the Summer League Championship there um, in Atlanta. I grew up in Cobb County and uh, was part of the Cobb Summer Swim League, and there was 30 teams in our Summer Swim League. So it's a lot bigger than it is out here, and I'll, I'll get into that in just a minute. And um, the governing body is not USA Swimming, but it's really league by league or city by city kind of governs it. And then a lot of them compete for all-stars under the general umbrella of GRPA, Georgia Rex and Park Association. And that's where the like district and state meets happen. So, Continuing on summer league, people like it because it is short. It's not, whereas ABSC is going year round, summer league is like I said, six to eight weeks. So you're kind of in and out, you know, the season starts by the time you get up to speed and get your, get your endurance going, the season's pretty much over. It's, it's really quick. Um, but it's cool for the whole family because you've got a six and under age group all the way up to a 15 to 18 year old old age group. So if you're like on my summer league team, we've got a couple of families that have like five, six kids and they've got the entire family swimming in the same team and swimming in the same swim meet, which is, which is pretty cool. And you can do that to AB, in, at ABSC too, to an extent, um, but it's a little different for summer league, just have, kind of having everybody in the same place at the same time. It's typically a lot more inexpensive and it's kind of easy access for the community. So 
a lot of new swimmers get their start in summer league because of that, kind of in the same way that you would join a rec soccer league, like I talked about earlier. And when I think about summer league, I like to think about kind of the fun side of it, like tailgate tents and snow cones. And like at uh, Oconee Club where I coach, we have to put a little kiddie pool by the front door because kids are running around out in the grass. And so they have to come and step in the kiddie pool and get the grass off their feet before they go swim the race. Then they'll go swim their race come back out, get their hot dog, go play cards with their friends and 45 minutes later, come swim again. So it's, it's pretty fun. It's a, it's a cool scene for sure. Um, and so locally, it's like I was getting into a minute ago, our summer league scene is kind of small compared to other metro areas. There are five teams in the Oconee Swim League uh, as well as a couple other local teams. So the Oconee Swim League is, um, let's see if I can do this on, on demand here. So it's uh, Oconee Club, Shamrock, Summer Hill, uh, Gen, um, Georgia Club and Reynolds Plantation would be your five teams. And then there's also a team at Jennings Mill that's not in the swim league, but competes with a lot of the swim league teams. And there's the East Athens Sea Turtles over in Green Acres neighborhood. And then there's the Downtown Dolphins at Bishop Park, which ABSC is pretty heavily involved in. And that's a massive team because they've got a massive pool, right? They got eight lanes plus a shallow end and a deep end. So they can fit a lot of kids in a, in a, in a Dolphins practice. So that's kind of your options locally. I didn't get into anything outside of Athens, greater Athens area, but there's also Jefferson has a team, Commerce has a team, Morgan County has a team. So kind of the, the and I think in Walton County, they have some teams. So just in general, there's like surrounding uh, summer league teams that you can participate on. Brad Aikens, YMCA and Winder. So those are a few of your options. This is not any of our local teams. It's just a random team I found on Google. But I, I laughed when I saw this picture because I literally have done this exact same pose when I was a swimmer where we all kind of sat on the side of the pool with the seniors in the water. And But I thought this was a cool representation of what Summer League is kind of like because you get all the different ages and experience levels and, and people in one place. It's a pretty cool thing. So ABSC sort of runs summer league, sort of runs a summer league team. Our, our biggest connection with it would be the downtown Dolphins at Bishop Park that I mentioned a minute ago, where ABSC sponsors the program. Uh, we're basically contracted by Athens Clark County to run the program. And Coach Jonathan has been doing that for a very long time since before I got at ABSC. I've been here for 11 years now. So um, I actually coached with Dolphins for a couple summers before moving over to Oconee Club. Um, so, yeah, Dolphins have been around for a really long – Coach Harvey used to coach them back in the day, and uh, and they practice at Bishop Park. A lot of the ABSC swimmers and coaches will swim and practice and coach there. Um, ABSC also has coaches like myself at several of the other local summer league teams, and that's always kind of been the case, like right now. I'm at uh, Oconee Club and at Shamrock is Coach Lydia Amerson. And um, before that, there were other ABSC coaches at Shamrock. The Sea Turtles had Coach Marilyn for the last few years before she moved to Atlanta when she got married this year. So a lot of the local teams will have an ABSC presence. And if there's not a coach there, then there's definitely swimmers. I think we, we have ABSC swimmers from every single local summer league team, all of the above, whether they're in the Oconee Swim League or not and even the Commerce and Jefferson and surrounding ones as well. So all that to say, I've just kind of made my pitch for Summer League. I love it. I got my start there as a coach and a swimmer. And um, like I started in Summer League as a six and under and then moved to club as a 12-year-old. And then I started coaching as a 15-year-old on my Summer League team before coming to college at Georgia when I started coaching for ABSC. So I like it. But the problem is you're going to have to choose between the two when summer rolls around. Do you do long course with ABSC or do you do summer league with your summer league team? How do you choose one or the other? Can we do both? What if my swimmer needs to take a break altogether and just doesn't want to swim at all in the summer? It's a lot to try to decide. And so in order to kind of help you make those decisions, what I'm going to do is break down my opinion based on what swimmers should do based on their age group. And then also I'm going to talk through our our practice schedule in the summer to make you as informed as I can be so you can uh, have an informed decision. So 10 and unders, I think you can do both. Um, last summer and probably again this summer, the, the Gups and the Pups from ABSC practiced in the afternoon slash evenings a couple times, you know, three times a week. Um, so and most of the summer leagues are in the morning, so you can do both if you'd like. If you had to pick one, I would probably recommend Summer League for 10 and unders because I think it's just such a valuable experience for them to get. 
I think it's really fun. It's cool to swim with your friends from school. Um, and, and be on the faster side. Like truth be told, if you've been swimming for ABSC for most of the year, it's not 100% true, but chances are when you show up back at your summer league team, you're going to be pretty competitive if you've been swimming for ABSC. That's not always true with 10 and under. 10 and under is kind of still the age group where the fastest kids are just the biggest ones, right? The kids that are biggest and strongest are going to be the fastest as 10 and unders. Um, so you have some kids who don't swim you around that are still pretty beastly on the, on the summer league scene when they're 10 and under. It starts to level out a little bit at, at the 11, 12 age group. And then definitely as they move into 13 and over. But for a, a 10 and under who's been swimming, when they go back to their summer league team, it's going to be a nice little confidence boost for them. They get to practice like most of the summer league teams practice every morning or like four or five times a week. And obviously you don't have to attend every single day. Well, I don't want to speak for other clubs on my team. You don't have to be there five days a week. But because they come and practice, let's say you've been swimming in the pups all year. You've been going two to three times a week. You show up at your summer league team in the summer and you're practicing four to five times a week. All of a sudden, you're going to take all that endurance and skill you had from the school year put it with a whole bunch of sprint racing and a whole bunch of meets and four to five day a week practice. A lot of your kids are going best times in the summer at summer league. It's kind of like a, like its own little mini season plan peak for them to swim really fast, which is cool. Uh, in the 11 to 14 age range, this is where it definitely gets tricky. So I've kind of broken it down by group. If you are in the dogs group, if your swimmers in the dogs group, we're typically going to encourage them to continue with ABSC and not stop training for summer league because typically if you're in the dogs you got some pretty big goals maybe you've got some state qualifying times or you're not far off of them you're not going to want to give up your aerobic training let's just I'll be frank I'm, I'm an honest guy when you're in 11 to 14 age group that's when aerobic training kicks in and if you're not training aerobically in that age group you're going to fall behind the pack a little bit it just is what it is and so we typically are going to encourage people to keep training ABSC if you're in the dogs group in that in that 11 to 14 age group. Um, that doesn't mean you can't do summer league, of course. You can, absolutely can. And I have that caveat at the bottom that I'll get to in a second. But we would encourage you not to drop club. If you're in pups or super pups, either direction is totally fine. Um, just keep in mind, like I was saying about the dogs, keep some of those goals in mind. Like if you have qualifying times for short course state, those actually carry over to long course state. You don't even have to swim a long course meet. You've already got the qualifying time. So it might behoove you to continue to do long course season and see how you do at the long course state meet, especially because a lot that meet tends to be a lot smaller. So it's just something to keep in mind, but you can do either one. I'm, I'm fine either way. Um, if finances or time allow, it's great to do both. And uh, it's common like a lot of my Stingrays kids on Oconee Club will swim most of their practices with ABSC, but they'll come anywhere from one to three times a week to summer league practice. They'll still do some or all of the long course meets, and they'll still do as many of the, short, the summer league meets as they can, sort of prioritizing their championship meet if they can do so. It's a lot to balance, though, so that's why you got to take it family by family, but I won't get ahead of myself. 15 and over age group, we would definitely encourage you to keep swimming unless you meet the following criteria. Keep swimming, I should say, with ABSC rather than summer league, unless you meet the following criteria. One, if you can maintain your ABSC practice schedule while still doing summer league, go for it. Be our guest. Feel free to do summer league as well, as long as it's not affecting your training. Because if aerobic training is important for 11 to 14-year-olds, it's vital for 15 and overs. So um, if, you, if your swimmer has the opportunity to be a coach or take on some sort of leadership role, like I said, I had a perfect setup when I was in high school where I could swim my long course practice in the morning. I think it was like six to 8 a.m. I would go straight from that 8 a.m. practice, drive across town to my summer league pool and start coaching at 830. And so if you have some sort of coaching or leadership role when you're 15 and over on your summer league team, that's a great way to stay connected and give back. And um, of course, you know, this isn't necessarily criteria, but keep in mind, if you've got younger siblings on the team, or if you're just not doing ABSC in the summer because you're traveling a lot or whatever it is, you've got other commitments, you want to break, then do summer league. Like that's definitely better than not swimming at all, at all, for sure. But just keep in mind that the 15 and over age group, when it comes to summer league, if you're going to keep doing it, where your, where your swimmer is going to get value out of it as a 15 and over is sort of in building their legacy and giving back to the team that helped them get where they are. That to me is the huge value in it. Plus getting to do it with your friends. When you've got a cool group of friends that you've been swimming with for a long time and you keep getting to do summer league together, that's a pretty cool experience. I think that'll, I know it's really valuable for me personally. 
I've seen it in our summer league community be really valuable for our swimmers. So I'd recommend it. Um, so now let's get into the, the practicals. Let's get into the logistics for you families to start making your decisions because this is, this is important stuff. So divisionals is our big season ending championship meet. This is what we peak our season, not pups and gups, but supers and up. This is what we try to make the pinnacle of our season plan is divisionals. We want our peak performance when we get here. Uh, we are the defending divisionals champions, both in team score and spirit award. And we're going to try to win both again this year. So we need as many swimmers there as we can to try to hold down the fort and win both of those competitions again. So that's March 23rd through 25th. And that is the de facto end of the short course season. Once we hit divisionals, pretty much all the other short course meets are over. That's kind of like the hard stop of short course. After divisionals, in terms of meets, after divisionals, we'll do a fun slash chill week. We always take the Monday after divisionals off. So it'll just be Tuesday through Friday. And it'll be, at least in my groups, it'll be, we'll probably get in and swim, you know, do some longer, easier swim out sets and then play some games, do some relays, have some fun. Just really try to celebrate the season that we had and all the hard training and hard, hard work that we put in because our kids work hard. So it's really important for their bodies to get that time to rest and recover after all the hard training that they've put in. After that, so that's March 27th to 31st. After that, we go right into spring break. It's just the way the calendar falls. Pretty much all of the local schools, I think, except for Athens Academy, have spring break April 3rd through 7th. So our club's just going to take that week off. It's a chance for coaches to unwind, go on vacation, chance for our swimmers to relax. And uh, it, we found that to be very important for our club to take that week of spring break off for everyone involved, parents, swimmers, coaches, everybody. After that, our award ceremony is now set for April 10th. And as usual, it'll be at Athens Academy. If you were on the team last year, you'll remember that April 10th is a lot earlier than we did it last year. We typically do the award ceremony like March, or I'm sorry, May 1st or May 2nd, right there at the beginning of May. We kept getting, um, we kept having parents comment that that was right in the middle of like AP exams. And that's a time when we wanna honor our seniors, right? So it's kind of unfair to make our seniors come and do this when they should be studying for their AP exams. So all that to say, we worked out a time with Athens Academy to meet at the, at the Harrison Center in the lower school and um, go to their auditorium and do our award ceremony. So that'll be April 10th. Tentative, it could change, but you know, I don't think so at this point. So then April 11th will be our first day of the long course season plan. Then when we get into early May, um, I can tell you we're working on the meet schedule right now. It's not finalized, but we've got a tentative one. And so that will be coming out into your inboxes in the next couple of weeks. So you can plan your long course season around the meets. And so our first long course meet will be at Ramsey and it'll be in early May, probably a dual meet with Swim Atlanta. We typically kick our season off that way just to get some long course swims in um, and just get those baseline of times that you wanna beat for the season. Then uh, May 30th, so we'll take off the 29th, which is Memorial Day. May 30th, we will begin our summer schedule. That's when we would be switching to mornings um, for most of the groups, like Super Pups and Up. We'll switch to morning practice that week. But um, yeah, I'll get, get into more of that in a minute. Summer League for most of these teams starts in mid of May in Oconee, mid to late May. Uh, in Athens and some of the other areas, they start maybe the last week of May after school is out. So that's kind of when summer league gets going. And then for long course, we will swim through July. So we'll swim May, June, July, April, May, June, July. We'll take off the last week of July because all the meets are done, unless your swimmers go into like zones or junior nationals. And then we're off in August as usual. Maybe the seniors come back about three weeks into August. Everybody else, maybe the very last week of August was when we would come back for the new 2023, 2024 season. And is it weird for anybody else to say 2024? I'm just, that's crazy to me. But anyway, um, I've linked our master calendar document here, which I've shared with all of you guys. I'm not going to go through it, but it will be updated with me information very soon. So I, I just wanted you to know that that was there and have that on your radar. Okay. Um, let's see. Okay, and here is, let me just run through last year's long course schedule real quick, and then we'll get into the Q&A stuff. So this is what we did last year. Um, we had senior one, 9 to 11 a.m. every morning, dogs, 9 to 11 a.m. every morning, super pups, 11 to 12, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Um, and then, 
I think there's more to that that's missing, but anyway. And so we kind of worked out where we had mornings, mid morning, mid to late morning at Ramsey. And then most of the groups had afternoon practice. Pups came for one morning and then did the other days at uh, GAC and Ramsey in the afternoon. So anyway, just to say, that's kind of like what you can expect. Now this year is gonna be a little bit different in terms of our uh, practice schedule. So you'll see, well, let me, let me finish this first. So summer league practices, every team except for the Dolphins practices in the morning, uh, the Dolphins practice in the evening. And so there is some conflict there in terms of practice. If you're in pups and gups, you'll probably be in the afternoon. And so you could do both long course and summer league pretty easily, but a lot of like the seniors and dogs will have some schedule conflicts where they'll have to work it out. I know last year, um, some of the senior one kids swam on my summer league team, but they would, we worked it out where the oldest kids went first at like 745. So the our older kids would swim from 745 to like 840 and then hop out and drive to Ramsey real quick for their long course practice. It's kind of how they worked that out. So some nuances for this summer. Summer is always weird for us, but this year we are losing Ramsey toward the end of June because they're going to be renovating the roof. So just some dates on your calendar. UGA has its annual swim camp. That will be June um, 5 to 17. We'll be out of Ramsey starting late June. I've heard June 24th, but I've also heard a few other days. So we'll probably get one week of normal Ramsey. The good news is we're likely to have afternoon or evening practices at Ramsey from the beginning of June all the way up until we're kicked out at the end of June. So we are going to be able to get some Ramsey long course practices in, especially for like supers, dogs, and seniors from the beginning of June all the way up until roughly June 24th or whenever it is that we have to leave Ramsey. In the past, we also had Bishop Park if we were kicked out of Ramsey. The problem is they're renovating Bishop Park this summer as well which means there may be no dolphins. Coach Jonathan is working on it, trying to see if there's another pool where they can get in and swim. So what it's really going to look like for us is it'll be long course season. We're not going to get a ton of long course practice time. It's going to have to be a lot of short course practice time. We'll get the Ramsey evenings uh, when we can. Other than that, we'll have lots of time at GAC in the mornings, you know, uh, in the afternoons, perhaps some YWCO, perhaps some Summer Hill, We'll piece it together the best we can, and that schedule will be coming in the coming weeks. I would expect most of the practices to, once we're out of Ramsey, most of the practices except for Gups and Pups will be in the morning. And so with that, um, let's go ahead into some Q&A time. I'm going to stop my screen share for a moment. And uh, there we go. And we'll get into a little quick Q&A before I, and so here's what we'll do. I had a couple people send me email questions. So in the meantime, I would love for you guys to think of any questions you have for me. I'm going to go through these email questions really fast, and that'll give you time to think of questions. And if you have a question, you can go ahead and put that in the chat and that will, um, that'll help us out really quick. So let me see Hopefully that was helpful. And as always, this is recorded. And so I will send it out to you guys when we're done. So a couple of questions I got from one parent that were really good. Um, they asked, long course is free because it was built into our monthly payment plan. Is that correct? Uh, good question. So if you're in the super pups and up, you're on a nine month billing schedule. So if you've been swimming with us since September and you've paid all nine months from September through May, then June and July, you don't owe us anything. It's a nine month billing schedule. Now, if you joined after September, then like, let's say you join in October, then you'll have to pay for June, but not July, because you still got to make nine months. And if you joined in November on, you'll still pay for June and July if you swim long course. But as always, if, whenever you stop swimming, if you pause your billing, you're not going to get billed. So if you decide to do summer league, you're obviously not going to owe us for June and July. Um, now, GUPS and PUPS, they're on an 11-month schedule, and so the billing continues regardless of when you join for GUPS and PUPS. So there will be a GUPS and PUPS bill June and July. The other groups is the ones that are on the nine-month schedule. Feel free to email me about that. If you have more questions, I'll send you our financial policy and talk you through it. Another question they had is, uh, if a swimmer qualified for short course state and they're still in the same age group, are they qualified for long course state? The answer is yes. The, they have conversion times, they qualify. So if you make one, you get the other. Another question on here, uh, 
why the 9 a.m. time during the day? So why are we why are we practicing at Ramsey at 9 and 11 a.m. and all that? That's a great question because ideally we would do it either before work for parents or after work. The reason that it's typically at nine in the morning is because we have to piggyback off of when UGA swim team has practice. So UGA will practice at Ramsey from seven to nine. And Ramsey asked us to come in right after that because all the lifeguards are there. So they've already scheduled building managers. They've already scheduled lifeguards. And so we piggyback on onto UGA practice. But the cool thing about this summer is they've told us, like I said, until we're kicked out of Ramsey, even during swim camp schedule those first couple of weeks, we can practice uh, at Ramsey in the afternoons. So that, or in the evenings, I should say. So that'll be nice for our older swimmers to be able to get some long course practice in. I would anticipate Gups and Pups will mostly be at GAC again. And then one more question I got is, how would you recommend combining long course and summer league? Summer league is so crowded for practice. Um, depending on where you're at. So how would we get a good workout? That's a great question. And I kind of went into that a little bit earlier, but if your swimmer is like super pups and up, maybe even pups and up, they're going to get a higher quality workout with ABSC than they are with their summer league team. It's going to be more challenging, more rigorous, and not nearly as many swimmers per lane. Most summer league practices are pretty crowded depending on where you are. But again, the reason we do summer league is for the fun, right? So I would recommend not quitting altogether if you if you can manage it because it'll be fun for your swimmers to be there and to do and to do both because they get to swim with friends from school or people they only see in the summertime so it's a it's a cool experience um i'm not currently seeing any other questions but i definitely want to just kind of keep this going for a minute in case anybody has any more questions and um i know i breezed through the long course schedule stuff there so what I'm going to do is, as always, this is recorded and I'm going to email you the PowerPoint as well. The PowerPoint will have last year's schedule and it will have um, what we're planning to do this year. And then in the coming weeks, like I said, we've already got a tentative meet schedule for long course. So that should be coming in the next couple of weeks. We'll have a better idea of practice schedule soon. I've got a call set up with the Summer Hill facility this week to talk through summer. So we'll have a much better idea of what our practice schedule will look like in our meet schedule here very soon. Um, good question. Somebody asked, when is the deadline to decide on long course? There really isn't one, you know, especially if you're on monthly billing schedule because you can pause any month. So if you're not decided yet, you can just wait till the information comes out. Yeah, with, with ABSC, we're pretty low pressure about all that. So if you wanna swim all the way into May, and get toward the end of May and you still haven't made your decision yet, not a big deal. And you can even take a break. Like I had a lot of swimmers, especially Gups and Pups last year, they would swim April, they would take off May and June, because especially in Oconee, because that's kind of the height of summer league season is in June. And then they would open their billing again for July and come back once summer league is over. Totally fine, you can do that. A couple other good ones. Approximately how many long course meets will we have before state? Good question. Typically we'll have four before state or about one. So we'll have May, late, early May, the dual meet with, some, with uh, Swim Atlanta. Then we'll have a meet late May, early June, another meet late June and another meet early July. So there'll probably be four long course meets and then the state stuff at the end of July. Uh, when will the decision on dolphins be made? I'm expecting that any day now. I don't think it'll be long. Um, Coach Jonathan has been has been working hard on that. It's just the problem is we're reliant on Athens Clark County to tell us. And uh, as you know, with with those sorts of things, none of local government doesn't always move quickly. I don't mean that as an insult. It's just a, a matter of fact. Um, any idea when slash where the summer county meet will be? and when the district in Habersham will be. Okay, so this is sort of an Oconee Swim League question, but I'm happy to answer that. So the summer county meet for Oconee Swim League will be either at Shamrock or at Georgia Club or at both, maybe 10 and unders at one, older kids at the other. So that will also probably be finalized very soon. The Oconee Swim League is working on that. And that'll probably be the weekend of June, like Saturday, June 24th, somewhere around there right when we're getting kicked out of Ramsey. That's that's roughly when that Oconee Swim League will be. 
The district meet in Habersham, I don't have that date yet. So sometimes GRPA can be a little slow on that stuff. And it's different because Athens is in a different GRPA than Oconee. They're on different weekends or a different level of GRPA. Athens is based on population size. So Athens is in the A level and Oconee's in the B level. Cool, those were good. Um, any other questions? We got, looks like under a minute here. Well, if that is it, just wanted to say thank you guys for joining. Hopefully that was helpful for you. Maybe you have a lot more questions now. And if that's the case, totally fine. You know, let me know what those are. That way I know what to communicate to people, right? Because I'm kind of guilty of things making sense in my mind, but not, you know, um, telling to anybody else. Do we know how long the Ramsey repairs are going to take? We should be back in by the fall. So we'll be out the whole summer. We'll be out through the end of July, but we should be back in for the 2023-2024 season. They're repairing the roof and adding a lot more natural light, so that should be nice. It's not like a major overhaul or major renovation. All right. Well, thanks, everybody. Y'all have a good one, and I'll get this emailed out soon. Take it easy. Happy Valentine's.